got oh, this yeah. too, can't we? Oh, yeah. oh, yeah, a lot of that. <laughs> <laughs> a okay. lot of that. Okay. I'm just worried because I don't All think right. you're in this. <laughs> no, I will be, though. We'll get yeah. the shots on me later. Well, Michael Wayne, we welcome you to Fort Worth, Dallas, and uh, very excited about this special showing of Hondo. Now, this is a movie that came out when? This is a movie that came out in 1953. Actually, probably 1954. It was filmed in 53. And at that time, it was done in 3D. It was filmed in 3D, but it was not extensively exhibited in 3D. In fact, it only played in about four theaters for about a week. So this, this running that we have now for leukemia will really be a first for most people. Seeing 3D on television has not been terribly successful in the past, has it? Um, the same person. All right. Have you, okay. Well, Michael Wayne, welcome to Fort Worth in Dallas. We're very happy to have you here on this occasion to talk about Hondo in, you're calling it natural vision. In natural vision. Yes. That's a new state-of-the-art 3D process. And uh, we're very, very happy that Hondo is the first film to use it. Hondo came out in 1950... I believe it was 1954. It was filmed in 1953 in Camargo, Mexico. And at the time, it was shown some places in 3D, wasn't it? Yes, it had a very limited uh, uh, exhibition in about four theaters for about a week. And then the, they dropped the 3D. Frankly, um, when the film was started, 3D was an important process and audiences really were excited about it. But by the time the film came out, which was a year after it started, uh, the interest in 3D had dropped. And uh, so this came out and was very, very successful in 2D. In fact, it was one of the most, uh, it was one of the fastest paying out films in the history of the film industry at that time. It paid off all its negative and distribution costs in about eight weeks. So the audiences really liked it. Now, why did you choose Hondo for this particular project? Because Hondo was originally filmed in the 3D process, so it was much easier to convert it to this new natural vision. What then will be involved when we tune in for this natural vision 3D presentation of Hondo on television? Well, what, what you'll have to do, if you really want to see it in 3D, is you'll have to go and get some of these glasses at your local 7-Eleven stores. And uh, you put them on, and you see 3D in your living room. And you, you, get, a, you get a feeling that, uh, that your television set becomes a window to the west. I mean, the depth is phenomenal. And there are some things that come off the screens, but I don't want to tell you about that. I don't want to uh, telegraph the film. But uh, these are on sale for 99 cents a piece at your local 7-Eleven stores. And this is a benefit, of course, for the Leukemia Society. Yes, all the net proceeds go to fund leukemia research. And uh, in talking to them, they think that if the money arrives, that they'll be able to cure leukemia in this decade, before the year 2000. And it's a great goal, and we're happy to be a part of it. Getting back to the glasses for just a second, supposing that you just happen to tune in and you don't have the glasses, what will you see? Well, you'll see, uh, you'll see a picture and, and it will be eminently watchable, but uh, we're trying to cure leukemia, so it would be better if everybody went out and bought a pair of glasses. You will not be able to see it in 3D if you don't have the glasses. You will be able to watch it as a normal film. Was Hondo any particular favorite film of your father's? Oh, yes. Uh, it was the first Western that he made for his own company, and he had a lot to say about what went on. And uh, he felt that he looked better in Hondo than he did in any other film. Uh, he, he had some personal problems. He was going through a divorce with Chada, his second wife, and uh, he was down in weight. And. Uh, he just looked very, very good, and I think you'll see that. It looks even better in 3D. <laughs> okay. Of all the other films that your father did, uh, is there one, possibly two, that you like? Yes, I, I think that, uh, 
I think that I really like She Wore a Yellow Ribbon. I thought it was one of his best performances. And then um, after that, you know, I have to I put a lot of them together. He won the Academy Award for True Grit. He was nominated for the Academy Award for Sands of Iwo Jima. Uh, the Quiet Man comes to mind. Yes, uh, The Quiet Man, I think, is uh, always gets on everybody's list at some point or other, doesn't it? Yes, and then you can't forget The Searchers, which it seems to top everybody's list when they talk about the John Wayne films. Will this Hondo be on video cassettes ever? Yes. Um, what we hope to do is, after this 3D run, we're exploring Laserdisc, and we hope that you'll be able to see uh, anytime you want, 3D in your own living room via the laser disc. Unfortunately, natural vision or any other 3D process does not work very well on the VHS format. So we're looking to other formats to, to get the quality that you need for the 3D. What are some of the other projects, uh, assuming, Michael, that this will be uh, very successful, what are some of the other projects you're looking at? Um, I, I'm what are some of the other projects I'm looking at? You yes. Mean, uh, 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 I, well, uh, okay. okay. Um, we have other films like Hondo that we release uh, periodically. Films like High and the Mighty, uh, McClintock, uh, One Called Island in the Sky. These are John Wayne films that really um, have been on the shelf a long time and have never been in, in home video, and we look to release those to home video for video cassettes and also for periodic network and cable runs. I have read that your father said that John Wayne, the movie star, was someone he invented uh, the walk and the way he talked and so forth. If that is true, then what was he like just as dad around the house? Well, then he must have invented himself as dad because he was very much, he walked very much the same off screen as he did on screen and he talked very much the same. I think some of those things are exaggerated a little bit. It's not a true quote, you don't believe? Um, not necessarily, no. Yeah. Did you find him to be a heroic sort of person, just uh, as your father? Well, I, you know, he was my father. Uh, he was a movie star. He really wasn't a hero. He was a movie hero. Uh, he was a hero to me because he was my father, and he was a hero to me the way he faced his cancer. But uh, um, uh, he was not uh, uh, what I would consider a bona fide hero. You worked with him on a number of his films, did you not? That's right. Yes. I was fortunate enough to produce some, and I was fortunate enough to work with him on a lot of them. Were you among the kids who appeared in The Quiet Man? Yes. <laughs> I recently talked with Maureen O'Hara, and she said that The Quiet Man was by far her favorite film because she was working with John Wayne. And then she said, we all had our families there. That's right. <laughs> what do you remember about that? Well, I remember Ireland. It was green, and uh, it was beautiful. The sun stayed up a long time, I mean, until 10 o'clock at night, so that let them work long hours. Everybody worked very, very hard, and it was a film that was hard to get going. In other words, uh, many of the studios were not too interested in the film, and when they finally got it going, everybody was very, very excited. They'd waited almost eight years from the time they first started talking about it, and so when it, when it was finally going, uh, everybody was there. Everybody was pulling together. It was like a team. Uh, I remember in, in the evening, because the Irish have a little different cuisine than we're used to, they used to bring the bread in from England, and Ward Vaughn used to make a big salad, and it was, it, it was fun. Was the film an immediate success when it came out? Immediate, yes. And it was the largest uh, grocer that Republic Studios ever had. And, of and course, it, it has now maintained its classic status for many, many years. Yes. Yes. Okay, uh, let me just check my notes here very quickly. Um, is there anything, Michael, that you want, want to touch upon that we have not yet? Of course, a lot of this I'll cover. Well, I, I don't think that we touched on the actual time uh, I, that you're going to run put, the... Yeah, uh, I'll put all that in, in the narration, uh, okay. uh, June the 24th and all that. Yeah, I, I, I can add that. Um, you want to include me? Got a great smile here, Marvin. You can't see it, but I can. <laughs> 
when the camera rolls, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Michael, what is the status of leukemia research? Well, hopefully they're very, very close to a cure. And, you know, research needs to be financed. And, and of course, the, the more money that comes in, the more research they can do. And their goal is, is to end leukemia by the end of this century. And projects like this really help. And that's what makes the project, uh, one, so important and too so, uh, so exciting to me to be a part of something that, that c could contribute to the end of this terrible disease. Is there any special reason why leukemia was chosen? Um, leukemia was chosen because they were very, very interested in doing it. And uh, uh, through a mutual friend, uh, I was introduced to somebody in the leukemia society and they said, we would love to be a part of it, let's make an event out of it. We have 57 local chapters, and they all want to get on board and be a part of what they call Team Hondo and make this thing a big success. One last question that is something I meant to follow up on and I didn't. How have the glasses changed from the last time we might have used glasses for 3D? Well, these are, because it's a different system, these glasses are different, and your older glasses won't work. Uh, these are what they call systemated glasses, and the, and the colors and the uh, coding, uh, C-O-D-I-N-G, is different. So you have to go out and buy these if you want to see it in 3-D. Just, just hold it up. Thank you. What's 30? <laughs> um, are they getting, are they, are they reflecting? <laughs> you keep jumping back there. I don't know. Should I have a little movement so it doesn't yeah, look like yeah, a steel? Yeah, that's a little bit of animation here. Okay. Well, here they are. Do you want him to put them says, on? Uh, no, no. Okay. It says the John that's Wayne, great. and th this, this, says, uh, the, uh, this says John Wayne, and then you, you have his photograph here in the middle. <laughs> My hand. Gee, I would have gotten a manicure had I known this was going to happen. Uh, four times. It's played about once every seven to I ten see. years. Okay. But never in 3D. Okay. This is the first in 3D. Okay. It's also the first uh, national 3D uh, film. My youngest Excuse sister. Excuse me just a yeah. second. Uh, Bob, why don't you record yourself? Oh, okay. So, so Marisa, who is my youngest sister, she's about 26 years old. She opens this Hondo uh, event. And she, she, she welcomes the people and she says thank you on behalf of leukemia. And then she tells a little bit about 3D, how to use the glasses and has to see one of the girls. <laughs> and she looks the most like my father. Really? Yeah. yeah. So are we still supposed to be talking? Yes. <laughs> yeah. You look most like your father. <laughs> yeah, right. Look at Bobby now because I see your lips moving. There you oh, okay. Go. Uh -huh. Oh, you're not supposed to see my lips, no. but, I, but I'm supposed to be animated, right? Yes, right, just okay. moving your head or something. All right. Can I wave these glasses <laughs> out there? This is what we're trying to sell, folks, cure leukemia. Yeah. It was such a kick to talk to Marina O'Hara again. I had not spoken with her. Yeah, she's a terrific person, and she's had a lot of tragedy in her mm -hmm. life. But, uh, you know, coming back, the last picture she made was Big Jake before this. And uh, she just decided, you know, why do it? Why, you know, why continue acting? And to get your head moving. Okay. Okay. All right. You ready? Okay. These glasses look differently from other 3D glasses we've used. Yes, they are actually. They're systemated glasses, and they've been encoded for the new natural vision system. And your old glasses won't work. Okay. We're not recording. Am I? I'm no, not. That's fine. <laughs> okay. Yeah. okay. All right. Bob, will that do it? Yeah. Okay.